Hello everybody and thank you all for joining us again today here on Hessens County for another TTRPG Talk. This video series takes a look at tabletop role-playing games and related materials, makes suggestions for your own games, and takes a look at some of my own materials. Today we're going to be doing something a little new for the series, uh, sorry, the, for the channel, and that is an interview. Um, in the, one of the last sorts of looks at different zines that are being released for Zine Quest, we are doing an interview of uh, several people who are releasing the Hard Light Dynamic. Uh, this is a sort of supplemental zine that's compatible with Cyborg that I definitely think you should check out. So let's get started. Thank you all for joining us uh, and uh, welcome to the channel, Chris and Joshua. Why don't you both introduce yourselves a little bit for those of you who are unfamiliar for, with you? Uh, yeah, my name is Chris Koger. Uh, I am part of Spooky Build Games, local to San Antonio, Texas. Uh, I've been playing and running role playing games, I don't know, since like the mid 90s when I was a very young child. Uh, and I've been in and out of the scene, you know, over the years and back in it more heavily about the last decade or so. Um, and have been excited to explore the kind of new indie role playing scene that's really developed lately. So. Yeah, my name is Joshua. Uh, I'm relatively new to board gaming myself. I only recently, I recently as in like the mid 2010s, started playing you know RPGs, um, and I made comics at the time. And for me, it was something that let me merge those two things: the love of creation and telling stories. So that's how I got started. And uh, I more recently have worked with Storywood Games, another local to San Antonio board game collective, and um, we publish some stuff. Holy Artifacts of the Sacred Tragedies was a, a big Mork Borg thing we did. Mm. Uh, Psalms, we did a Psalms uh, little zine for one of the miseries. And uh, we also did a System Neutral, Junction City. So that was all, those are all ton, tons of fun to make in terms of Kickstarters and uh, just kind of continue that trend. Sweet. Well, that sounds really great. Um, so in the intro, I mentioned uh, that uh, the uh, hard light dynamic is intended to be played with the sort of cyborg system. But what is the elevator pitch for your zine? For me, my go-to just to kind of get people excited is I say it's a heist gone wrong. Mm -hmm. It's not like a full heist gone wrong. There's definitely a lot more to it than that, but like the easy, you know, just to kind of help the audience person get their kind of head around it. It's to say like it's a heist gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, definitely the heist gone wrong is a good way to get people in. I always let people know also, there is an AI at the bottom of this place that you're exploring. Uh, and this AI is kind of melting reality slowly down around itself. So get ready for things to get very weird. Very, very trippy. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, just from uh, getting a chance to, to hear some about uh, your uh, Zine so far, I have noticed that there are a number of different things that would appeal to storytellers and game masters, like all kinds of randomized day tables and stuff like that. But I'm kind of curious on if there might be anything interesting for like just a regular player of Cyborg uh, that goes beyond the actual like heist itself that you, th that you mentioned that goes wrong. <laughs> Amazing. I think there's a, a ton of stuff that you can take out of there. Um, uh, like I think the tables, like you said, we we worked really hard to put some really cool tables together. I think we came up with some really fun traps and encounters and you know all sorts of stuff in there that you could just take and and put into another situation entirely um, and have it work just as well. Yeah, if you're a player, also there's two new classes in there. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you want to kind of explore something that's a little bit different, you know, then uh, there's two kind of classes that they fit the flavor specifically of the adventure, but they're totally mm. usable in any cyborg campaign. Okay, so they're not like dependent on that AI that you mentioned that's kind of melting reality necessarily being there for them to work. Exactly, yeah, okay. yeah they fit pretty well into the whole sci world there, so. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All righty. Um, so, um, I mean, I, I, I know that both of you have done uh, stuff for Morkborg before. We do have uh, a review uh, or an interview, rather, uh, on the Hessens County blog that we uh, for a product uh, you, that you'd made earlier. But I'm curious on why you chose Cyborg specifically to tell this sort of like this AI story that you have in the in the hard light dynamic. 
Um, and how do you feel that the heist sort of best leverages the cyborg system? Ooh, that's a fun question. Also, I appreciate your coverage earlier of Beyond Deep, uh, the more Quark adventure that Wes Askelis and I did together for Parts mm -hmm. of People Games. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like the Borg systems. Uh, I like Free League and kind of the aesthetic of Stockholm Cartel, the Denmark Borg and Cyborg. Um, you know, there's like the practical aspects. Um, they're, they have a really great third party license. They love creators. They make it really easy for you to make things for their systems. Mm -hmm. um, but they also have a really clean running system of like it's good mechanics, like it plays well like people can pick it up, you know, and really enjoy it, but there's enough depth there to like keep you locked in. Plus in Cyborg, they expanded some ideas out from Workborg, you know, and got into nanotechnology and, you know, hacking and like these kind of things, but didn't overburden it, you know, they kind of mm -hmm. kept that streamlined uh, mentality to a lot of it. Um, and then it just drips with, with Uzi style, you know, there's, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of weird, you know, like infections and infestations you can get there's weird biological stuff going alongside the cyberpunk stuff so mm. uh, so I, I i like that vibe a lot you know uh, mm. it, it works well for me personally and i think it's history to play around in yeah uh, to kind of build on what chris said i totally agree with him uh it's very much a sandbox i feel like i love cyberpunk uh my first like long campaign was with chris running the sprawl um and uh mm -hmm. so i really love like rpg cyberpunk stuff and uh, so i, I want something that i could run and write stuff in but the sprawl is powered by the apocalypse where the whole you know mentality is you you really can't plan ahead it's really hard to write adventures for so um That's cyborg true. seemed like something that was super simple and, and easy to get people into and then I, I i like to when people ask me this question i like to say you know I, I make things for the people around me. Like I play with them. <laughs> I, I try to write stuff that I know my friends know that I know that is easy to get them to sit down and play at the table. So, uh, you know, they might not know Cyborg, but if, if someone at the table knows Cyborg, it's really easy to have a player help them learn along. It's really easy to teach people the game in general. And and like Chris said, it just kind of flows really well. So once once you get going, it's hard to kind of to, to stop. So I, I'll uh, I'll play it with my friends a lot of times and and, and I try to play to that audience and, and know what they like. So that, that was one of the reasons why I, I went with Cyborg on this one was to have that cyberpunk, but you know, play and find out. Uh, but we were walking that fine line of you're still trying to sell a story and you plan ahead of, for that. Cool. Um, so is the team just the two of you, or is there are there other people and what are they doing? So uh, the team, as it's comprised right now, it's uh, myself and Chris. Uh, we're you know writing, producing. Chris is doing the layout, um, and then we have an artist. His name's Mark. Uh, Mark Pika. He's from the Philippines. He's mm. been an absolute pleasure to work with. Um, you know, we stumbled upon him one day on a hungry artist forum, and uh, you know we connected with him, and it's just been a blast working with him. He's been uh, an absolute pleasure, and I can't wait to show you guys all the art that he's uh, done so far. That's. That sounds really great. I'm, uh, I really like it when when people are able to sort of collaborate internationally, um, especially, you know, people who are in like uh, RPG Latem or, or RPGC. It's definitely good to, to see them being able to, to get involved in a lot of projects, um, especially ones, of course, that as you as I'm sure you you two probably know fund projects that they necessarily they can't necessarily fund on Kickstarter. Um, because of all of the economic stuff and you know mm -hmm. so that's good um so um your kickstarter campaign is set to end uh late on march 13th here in the u.s but uh can you tell us a little bit more about what sort of like the expected timeline for fulfillment might look like moving forward from there uh yeah the fulfillment set uh for august of 2023 um, so, you know, we feel that we, we've both done projects before on Kickstarter, uh, you know, they've been successful, we've been able to fulfill them. Um, I actually, like, I was laughing, so I was uh, talking to Josh and I was talking to, to Wes, uh, and, uh, you know, on the day that we launched the Hard Light Dynamic, like a whole bunch of boxes of like hundreds of copies of beyond deep landed on his doorstep you know uh you know so uh so that those have been getting packed up you know on one side while we kind of launched this campaign on on the other side of things uh but yeah i mean 
the writing is there, the art is coming in, um, you know, you never know with, you know, kind of the world the way it is and shipping gets weird sometimes internationally and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, you know, sometimes there's weird shortages, but August looks good. Sounds great. Okay, um, I have one more parting question for both of you. Um, and this one might be a little bit of a doozy, so I apologize ahead of time. Why are um, you do it... this to us? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I did it in the other interview, so I just got to do it again, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, if you could describe sort of like the feeling or the plot of the hard light dynamic using a piece of like uh not ttrpg media um so a music tv show video game anything like that what would it be this is a tough one um i think of a couple things if i'm allowed to have a couple things here sure um, of course <laughs> Dead no, space. Josh, you get only one. <laughs> only one. I'm going to mention like seven, but only one. I, I think of um, Dead Space as like a video game. I, I mm. think that's something that for me, when I'm thinking of building atmospheric horror, especially with the re-release that came out recently, it's just still like a really, you know, if that's your bread, if that's what you like in your horror, it's really good at building that atmospheric horror and dread. Mm. Um I also, uh, just some comics. I Like I said, I read a lot of comics. Mr. Miracle, uh, trying to pull oh. some of the weird aesthetics mm, from that yeah. run from Tom King and, and Mitch Gerard. Really good. Um, and then Gideon Falls. That was another one that I read uh, oh. a lot that we were talking about by uh, Jeff Lemire. And I think Andrea, I can't remember their full name, but they're very good books to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gideon Falls is killer um yeah you know it is it is funny right like there's things that that i want to write that are so hyperly affected by a certain idea or thing like josh and i have talked about like we really want to do an adventure based around the movie green room um wow. i'm obsessed with it I, I literally rented a theater and did a screening and made a zine for it and stuff you know what i mean and so mm -hmm. like when that comes out there's gonna be other stuff in there but that that's gonna be the thing mm -hmm. um you know with with uh, the hard light dynamic it's you know like it's got you know annihilation in there it's got suspiria in there you know mm -hmm. it's got mandy in there and you know it's got a, a little racer head in there and altered carbon and the matrix and altered states and you know like all of these like little pieces of stuff you know mm -hmm. from kind of the acid horror psychedelic horror world and the cyberpunk world and we kind of like threw them in the blender put them all together and then made sure we had a good kind of story and feel through it you know mm -hmm. and then built a toolbox around you know that so that way you could still really mess with it and play with it for your group. But there is kind of a good through line that like makes it feel cohesive at the end. Cool, good. Um, actually, I know I said that that was gonna be our parting question, but I have a follow-up based on what you just said. <laughs> Let's do it. Does the current stuff going on with, with, with AI you know, the virtual intelligences that people are creating have something to do with this AI that you created in the basement of this building. So uh, just to kind of jump on this, the original idea for this project started when Mid Journey came out. I was mm. talking with Wes, who, you know, the, one of the creators on Beyond Deep. Um, you know, we were talking back and forth on this idea about, right, like, what would it, what would a cool AI look like in the in the future for like a cyborg adventure where you have like people where people are cheaper than like computers and so you, you have all these people whose brains are powering this ai and mm -hmm. uh, you know building like kind of like a story web around that and we've mm -hmm. moved away from from a lot of those elements um but you know that was again more of like a, a matrix style going back to one of the touchstones chris mentioned mm -hmm. um but, uh, you know, we, we moved into the more psychedelic horror after that, but uh, it was originally conceived with regards to, you know, specifically mid journey and the idea of this AI chewing through, you know, la like labor, right? Like a lot of mm -hmm. people putting in labor and, mm -hmm. and whatnot and the AI just kind of consuming that and spitting out whatever, you know, is asked mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it is like, definitely that's where it started and you can't think about ai these days right without all the conversations that like we're having um but it also has like a very storied history in you know science fiction and, and cyberpunk and 
even in big touchstones 2001 a space odyssey and stuff you know there mm. so there is that kind of like you know ai gone wrong you know bent to things and then twisted into that kind of acid horror style mm. um you know but then there is an aspect you know when you're going in and we'll give a little away you know your mission might be kind of variable maybe you're stealing the ai maybe you're destroying it because it's gone rogue maybe you're setting it free you know because this group resistance group paid you to get in there and set it free you know maybe mm -hmm. so you you've got decisions there and then when you get down in there to interact with it you know now you're in the middle of a mess and you've got to make decisions you know about well, is this really what we want to do you know do we take the cold hard cash and just burn this thing out or steal it or do we let it be or should we let it be because obviously it's doing a whole bunch of really weird things in here you know so mm -hmm. so it's fun to play with those ideas you know uh in this kind of space which is why i love sci-fi and cyberpunk especially well that certainly sounds uh equally awesome and uh terrifying <laughs> so <laughs> i think you've hit your note uh <laughs> Thank you both for joining uh, for joining me here on Hessens County. And um, again, just a reminder for everybody watching: the um, the uh, Kickstarter will be uh, finishing on March 13th. Links will be in the doobly doo down below. And don't forget to rate your it purchases. <laughs> Thanks, Sasan. I appreciate you. Thank you. If you would like to show your support for this channel or for the Hessens County blog, in the description down below, you will find links to the channel coffee and also the itch store. Please feel free to take a look and thank you for your support.